I'm Kakachan Komarov. I'm uh, from Cincinnati uh, Children's Hospital. And um, in today's uh, talk, I would, um, I'll try to demonstrate the user network analysis methods and, and, and specifically our own network um, uh, algorithm in the analysis of large uh, uh, genomic data sets from both individual micro, uh, micro uh, data but also from, uh, from large cl uh, multi scale clinical data sets. Um, and um, as a case study, I'll be presenting uh, our work on acquired resistance to herbicide uh, targeted therapy on, uh, on our cell culture model. And, um, and, and also um, our work on identifying central players of OB2 driven tumor genesis uh, out of, uh, by, by interrogating large uh, clinical data sets. Uh, the, uh, our work on, uh, on our cell culture model of acquired resistance has, uh, has recently been, been published and, and the rest uh, in, this, uh, in this talk is, is, uh, is unpublished. First of all, let me, let me present uh, the, uh, the problem that, that, uh, that we're addressing in, um, in, in acquired lipatin resistance. So basically, ERB2 is, is a member of the receptor and kinase family um, and, uh, and it is amplified in, uh, in 15 to, to 25 percent uh, of, uh, of breast cancers and correlates with poor, with, with, uh, with poor prognosis. The current standard uh, uh, regimen in, uh, in target therapy of, uh, against uh, against OB2-positive tumors is, is, is use of monoclonal antibodies, or, or more recently, lapatinib, a small molecule inhibitor of, uh, of OB2 and EGFR kinases. So the problem, as with any uh, target therapy uh, these days, is basically a quiet resistance. This is not a problem of if, but but this is a problem of, of uh, but, but but this is a question of, of when. So uh, a quiet resistance to, uh, to lapatinib and, and almost any uh, other target uh, target agent is uh, is uh, inevitable. So, uh, so to, 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 find mechanisms, to, to identify mechanisms that, that are involved in, in, uh, in, in acquired resistance uh, to lapatin, we, we developed a cell culture model of acquired resistance uh, in SKBR3 cells, which are endogenously ERB2 amplifying. By, uh, by continued uh, exposure of these cells to, uh, to increasing the dose of lapatin over a year, so we, uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we achieved a 100-fold uh, resistance uh, to lapatin uh, in, uh, in this manner. So we call these cells SKBR3R. Um, so uh, unlike uh, previous models of the cell culture, uh, uh, unlike previous cell culture models of lapatin resistance, our, our cell culture model is not associated with, uh, with alterations of signaling pathways at the receptor uh, level or, or downstream of the, uh, of the EGFR ERB2 kinases. So meaning that resistance is, is imposed by additional pathways outside of the classical EGFR uh, pathway. So to find uh, what, what processes, what network processes are involved in, um, in, in, uh, in acquired resistance uh, to lapatinib, we perform gene expression uh, analysis, micro gene expression analysis from, uh, from both SKB3, SKB3R cells before and after lapatinib treatment. And we, uh, and we analyze them using our own uh, network algorithm. So network is, uh, is a data biased random walk. Uh, so where transition probabilities um, uh, in this random walk are biased uh, towards data, uh, unfortunately I can't go in, into, into too much detail of this, but I will just uh, suffice by saying that uh, the, the, uh, the bottom line is that network uh, uh, translates gene expression data, gene-centric expression data to interaction-centric data. So the, the, the result of the network is not one network, is not uh, five networks, is not, is not a series of networks, but it is actually a whole distribution of edge flux values that are assigned to each interaction in the, in, in the, in the network of, uh, of prior interactions, of, of, of known interactions. In that, you know, in, in that way, you can, uh, you can cure them to, uh, to, to construct either uh, your networks of interest or, 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 or heat maps, like, uh, like in this case, you, you would, you would um, translate your gene-centric gene network into an interaction-centric network and perform comparative network analysis. Uh, this, this, this uh, I, I will say, is sort of uh, unique uh, uh, to network. So uh, unlike uh, current seed-based networks where, uh, where, where you have your predefined uh, genes of interest and, and, and then, then you build your, your, your network around them, in the end, you, the, your, um, your network ends up uh, to be uh, composed of genes that, 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 that are of interest and that are not uh, mostly of, of, of interest. In, uh, in network, you have a whole distribution of, of, of edge flux values which, which can be uh, curated for, for networks of interest and, and all the net genes that, that, you'll, uh, that you'll get in, in, your, in your results in networks are going to be of, a, of, a, of, a, of high of coherence to your input data. Uh, we can talk more about that uh, later. So, uh, and, and all of this, uh, a network and additional methods uh, and, and its extensions to, to analysis of, uh, of um, uh, to functional analysis are implemented in, uh, in Networker, which is freely available and uh, has been published uh, recently. So this is the edge flux heat map um, of, uh, of, of gene expression data uh, from, uh, from parental and resistant uh, cell lines before and after lipatin treatment. Uh, this is, the interpretation of this is, is pretty much like in gene expression data. Uh, 
uh, with the exception that here rows are not genes but are actually interactions. And, and, and they can be curated for, uh, uh, so, so you, can, um, you, uh, you can view what, uh, what, what these represent, what networks these represent. Uh, so in, um, in, in our case, we observe that, that uh, the, the response of, of both cell lines is actually uh, very similar uh, to lopatinib. So, but, but, uh, but very interesting, we, we see these two clusters that, that are differentially uh, um, uh, expressed between parental and resistant cells. So, so what, what this tells us is that since, since, their, uh, since, since their response is, uh, is, is quite similar, the only difference is the, is, is the magnitude of the response. Um, so the, these, these networks that are upregulated at the baseline level must be, must be uh, the, the networks that are actually imposing the resistance uh, phenotype. So, and, and, and when we analyze these, these networks that are specifically high in resistant cells, we see uh, these networks that are involved in, uh, uh, in, in glycolysis, uh, glucon gluconeogenesis, glucose transport, unfolded protein response, and so on and so forth. So all uh, uh, classical signs of unfolded protein response and, and ER uh, stress response due to hypoglycemia. And, uh, and, and, and a more detailed analysis of, uh, of, uh, of the data set uh, identifies these additional pathways that, that are classically involved, as I said, in, in ER in, uh, in the plasma reticulum, adaptive uh, stress response, uh, including hexosamine, dolicol pathway, glucose uptake, glycogenolysis, uh, and glycosylation, this, uh, that is glycosylation reactions in the, uh, in the, in the, in the plasma reticulum, autophagy, AMPK, uh, in the plasma reticulum, sh uh, chaperones, or glucagon signaling. And, uh, and this can be verified by, uh, by, by Western blotting, that, that, that resistant cells are, are indeed uh, displaying this ER stress response uh, phenotype. So, um, so, so what this suggests is, uh, is that, so since, uh, since ER stress response uh, pathways, hypo hypoglycemic ER stress response uh, pathways are specifically high resistant cells, it may imply that, that, these, that these pathways are, um, uh, are imposing the, resist uh, the resistance, the uh, protection against lapatinib. So what that uh, in retrospect implies is that, that lapatinib toxicity in parental cells may be associated with, with glucose starvation. And, th and that's in fact uh, exactly what we see. So glucose, uh, I mean, uh, lapatinib treatment in parental cells uh, induces uh, glucose starvation and also, uh, and also ATP depletion. And, um, and, and very interestingly, uh, glucose uh, in, uh, in, in resistant cells after, after lapatinib treatment is, is channeled towards the hexosamine pathway, which I just showed uh, to be specifically upregulated in, in resistant cells. So the, uh, the, the model uh, that, that, that we extract uh, that, uh, from, uh, from all these um, uh, analyses is that basically EGFR, uh, orbit 2 signaling, is required for glucose uh, import in, uh, in parental cells, and when you inhibit it with, uh, with lapatinib, th there's a significant glucose starvation um, inhibition of the hexosamine pathway and, and resulting uh, ER stress. But in, uh, in resistant cells, there's a chronic uh, activation of the, of the adaptive ER stress response, uh, which, um, which, which confers constitutive glucose uh, import and, he and, and hexosamine pathway activity uh, even, even uh, during lapatinib treatment. So what this, um, uh, so, so we also tested if, uh, if imposing ER stress, adaptive ER stress on parental cells can, uh, can protect them from, uh, from lapatinib and, and indeed if you, uh, if you put cells in, in sublethal ER stress uh, inducing um, uh, environments such as, uh, such as uh, glucose deprivation or, uh, or with tunicomycin, you can, you can partially protect them from lapatinib. So meaning that, that, that ER stress response can can, can protect uh, 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 RB2 positive cells from, uh, from toxic effects of, uh, of lapatinib. So now all this, um, what all this uh, now uh, shows is, is, is that basically um, uh, acquired resistance is, uh, is a major problem and ER, uh, and ER stress response has, has some kind of role um, in, um, in, uh, in this. So next uh, we, um, we wanted uh, to, uh, uh, to see what, what pathways can be, can be targeted in resistance cells. So, uh, so uh, and, uh, and obviously we went after the ER stress response. So uh, to, to find drugs, uh, potential drugs that, that may reverse this, this uh, ER stress response phenotype, where we made uh, use of the, of the CMAP data set, connectivity map data set of the broad institute. So we, we took our, our hypoglycemic ER stress response signature from resistance cells, ran it against all the 6 to 100 uh, micro patient profiles profiles in, uh, in the CMAP data set and identified um, uh, several drugs that, that are likely to reverse uh, this, uh, this phenotype. And very interestingly, uh, among those was, uh, among the highest scoring drugs was Pervinium, which, which is already known to be, uh, to, to inhibit unfolded protein response, the, the ER stress response to, uh, to hypoglycemia. And when we treat re uh, resistant and parental cells with Pervinium, we see that uh, resistant cells are significantly much, much more sensitive to, to Pervinium. And not just Pervinium, but, but also another important branch of, uh, of, of UPR, of unfolded protein response uh, autophagy. So, 
So, the, so, the, so this basically shows that yeah, ER stress response has, has a causal role in lipidome resistance, but, but it's also important for the survival of, uh, of, um, of these cells and, and, and maybe um, a, a viable therapeutic target. So, so next, um, uh, we, uh, so we asked, can we, can we identify pathways? So can we identify pathways that, that support, uh, that, that are required for ub 2 uh, driven tumor genesis? Um, so um, genes that are essential in, in ub 2 driven tumor genesis so that we could probably identify additional targets uh, for, um, uh, um, uh, as, um, as a therapeutic strategy. So the, uh, the premise um, of, of our approach here was identifying genes whose expression is acquired in ERB2 driven tumors. So um, to, to, to demonstrate this, so uh, during evolution of the, of, of, uh, of the tumor, right? so uh, you have, uh, have ERB2 amplification that, that, that happens uh, early on uh, during uh, tumor evol evolution, and then that will activate uh, gene expression programs that, um, that, 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 that will induce genes that, that are responsive to, to hyperactive ERB2. Uh, signaling, but then there will also be genes that, that are not explainable, that, that cannot be explained by, hyper, by hyperactive ERB2. That, so these genes are specifically high uh, only in, in, in ERB2 positive tumors, but, but their expression is not due to ERB2 uh, activity. So they, they were probably acquired uh, during tumor evolution as um, as um, as adaptive strategy uh, due to some uh, secondary genetic or, or, or epigenetic events. Um, and so, so this is just uh, uh, an example of, uh, of, of such a gene, VCP, ATP, is th th this is a member of the, of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum adaptive uh, stress response, uh, actually ER-associated degradation. And uh, so here you have ERB2 copy number, uh, ERB2 mRNA expression. So each, each point here uh, is a patient and, and its coloring shows VCP expression in, uh, in, uh, in those patients, uh, in those uh, patient samples. And, uh, and this is the ERB2 positive uh, patient. And, and you see a specific expression of VCP in only ERB2 positive uh, patients. So, so, the, so the general uh, idea is this. So basically, ERB2 amplification will, uh, will activate growth promoting pathways in addition to, uh, to stress pathways, uh, what Dean Felcher uh, yesterday uh, called as oncogenic shock. And uh, so I will, uh, I will then uh, skip uh, 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 very fast uh, through this. So acquired networks are, are supposed to inhibit stress pathways and, uh, and promote tumor genesis. So we, we, we did this, uh, this, this analysis in the, in, in the, in the TCJ data set from, uh, from about 400 patients. And, and, we, and we identify pathways that are, that are, very, that are very strikingly involved uh, in, in ER uh, quality control, in, in, in ER adaptive, uh, adaptive stress response and, uh, and quality control, including all the signaling pathways, uh, complexes, uh, uh, complex machineries, and, uh, and also metabolic pathways. And, and very importantly, we, we can actually uh, verify this in, uh, in also uh, um, uh, cell lines. Uh, in a panel of uh, breast cancer cell lines, we, we saw that, 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 that these are also reproducible at a, at a protein level. So, we, uh, so based, uh, based on these, we, um, so we, we derived a, uh, a model of, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of signaling interplay between ERB2 signaling and ER, and ER quality control machinery. Um, and, and we'll also verify this by, by several, uh, I'll, so I will just uh, very quickly uh, skip to, um, uh, to the summary. So uh, but, uh, in the end, uh, uh, what, what I try to demonstrate here is the use of network analysis methods, and speci specifically of, of, of network in the analysis of, uh, of, of both uh, indi individual microarray data sets, but also large clinical data sets, to, to arrive at testable mechanistic models of, um, of phenotypic behavior. Thank you very much and uh, specific knowledge.